AEMs are stretching your ears? Yeah, I, I, I legit think so. Or I hit puberty <laughs> late. I hit puberty really, it's a, late. It's, a, it's an ear growth spurt. Hey guys, you're watching the Headphone Show presented by Headphones.com. We've got the gang all here, all of our video content reviewers, and we're going to talk about our different recommendations at different price points. Not necessarily what we'd recommend to you, but what we would use at different price points for buying a headphone or speaker system. So here's what we've got. I want to just kind of jump in and kind of explain a little bit why this is an interesting topic for us, um, because oftentimes when we're reviewing things, we're thinking about how something might be for you know, a particular, you know, audience or group that likes a certain thing that has a certain preference, right? And, you know, you know, we'd be saying, okay, yeah, like the Hi-Fi Aria is like really great for people who like jazz or that kind of thing, right? Um, but it's a bit different when we're talking about, you know, things that we personally would buy for ourselves because we all have different requirements for, you know, our listening environments, how long we're listening, you know, comfort, uh, these types of things, you know, how big our space is, whether or not we can have a speaker system, and so, oh, Jesus Christ, there's a truck backing up. I don't know if you guys can hear that. Beautiful. <laughs> this is one of the things that I'm talking about where it's like, you know, maybe noise canceling headphones are more appropriate if you have constant noises of trucks backing up or people walking by your place yelling noise, noise, noise. That happens um, over here. It's at just the flavor show. for your wiggly air. Yeah, exactly. Uh, but the point is, you know, uh, about this is, you know, this is sort of what we would personally buy at a given price bracket. I want to start us off, I think, with a more budget segment. You know, if you had, if someone just gave you $200 to spend on an audio product, I want to get your guys' take on what you would buy. Um, I have something in mind, but maybe I'll start with, uh, I'll start with um, precognition first, if you have something in mind. Yeah, sure. I think that for a lot of people at $200, the go-to pick is going to be the Sennheiser HD6XX. But for me, like, I own an HD6XX and I will say that I've never like really liked it very much. I don't listen to it at all. In fact, it's sitting at Super Review's house right now. I've lent it to him for like the past month. So, and you got, everyone knows I'm more of an IM guy anyways. So I think for me at least, I would probably dump the majority of the money into an IM, like the, maybe one of the Moondrop single DDs. I think the KXXS is still one of my favorites. There's just something about the KXXS in particular that's just sort of stuck with me in the long run. I've had mine for, I think, like two years at this point. So I dump like, I think it's $160 for the IM into that. And then I would maybe dump like 10 bucks into an Apple dongle. And that would be my little setup under $200. I was going to say like KXXS and Aria and all of those, there's there's sort of that similarity there. Is it, Out of all of those, is your, is your favorite still the KXXS? Oh yeah, it definitely is. Oh, interesting. And, you know, the differences are That's really cool. subtle, but like... The KXXS is the one that I think just appeals to me somewhere deep down, like more than the other ones do. It might just be because it was my first like Moondrop IM, really, but like I just like it more than any of the other ones that I've heard, even if it's just by a little bit more. The, the particular waifu speaks to you the most. I like, did they even <laughs> use those on those? The, the, okay, it, the waifu on it is pretty good. <laughs> Chrono, uh, your pick. Oh, well, for me, I think it depends on what direction I'm going. If it's something I'm going to be using on my desk, I feel like it's easily going to be the HC 560S, especially now that I think, I don't know if it's, it was like a Black Friday thing, but I saw it was like 149, which I think like that's a great deal. Like that's probably one of the best audio deals right now, in my opinion. I feel like that's a very versatile headphone, very good performance, a little spicy on the treble, but still pretty, pretty good tuning overall. Uh, and then other than that, I, I think the other one I would go for would be Honestly, Apple AirPods, obviously can't afford the pros under 200 bucks, but if it's something that I'm going to use outdoors, AirPods, those are my audio picks. See if you could borrow 50 bucks from somebody and then get the AirPods Pro too. <laughs> Take a small loan. Student student yeah. discount. I think with student discount, you might be able to get away with that, actually. Uh, uh, Golden, we haven't heard from you yet. Uh, $200, what's your, what's your go-to there? Uh, for me, it's going to be the Moondrop Kato, which is what I'm wearing at the moment. Um, not because I think they're the best IEM under $200, but because they fill a particular use case, which is listening to music whilst I'm working. Because I've got plenty of other stuff which I can use whilst I'm just dedicated listening. But I find that a lot of headphones are pretty distracting whilst I'm trying to get work done. Whereas these, they're a really nice balance of being technically competent and detailed and just overall proficient, but a little bit chillaxed at the same time, just a little bit chilled out. And yeah, not distracting when I'm trying to get work done. So even though I've just got these here for the review period, I found myself personally using them a lot. It's a good sign, I guess, if you're a reviewer and you find yourself using it, you know, 
<laughs> more than just the time that you need to. Yeah, exactly. Uh, DMS. Oh, man. Uh, short and sweet HD 560S. I just, I still love it. Um, I was a little bit torn because there are some other things I use at that price point. I still use the NTH 100 sometimes from Rode. I like these, the PC38X, because sometimes I play games. But if I had to pick one at that price point, one thing only, I think it'd be the HD 560S, mostly because 6XX I feel like kind of needs an amp more. Um, so can't really squeeze that in at that price point for me. For me, I am going to go in-ear because I think there's so much value um, with the in-ears in the budget space. So I would get the, yeah, Qlux 5K for sure because of how useful that is. Um, and then the, this is the the Truthier Hexa, um, which is almost perfect um, for the tuning. I would just give it a bit of a bass boost and then maybe just drop, you know, the up, mid to upper treble a tiny little bit with the Qlux 5K. And so that, that, that's around $200 there, I think, because it's 80 bucks for the Hexa and then 110 for the Qlux 5K. So that's what I would buy for myself and might still buy for myself. <laughs> it's kind of bonkers how fast the IEM market's just developed in the last couple of years. It, it feels like, I mean, headphones and everything else has advanced, but IEMs have just gone absolutely light speed. It's kind of crazy. Yeah, kind of makes the, you know, like we talk a lot about like the, Diminishing returns, right? For as you go up, sort of the price ladder, um, reminds me of something that you know uh, Precog said in um, in in that video that you did about you know um, things you wish you knew, right? Where you said price is mostly just a number. This makes that even more true. Where you know the diminishing returns kick in way earlier than they used to. So even just in the last couple of years, so it's it's pretty crazy now. I think there's also an interesting dichotomy there, though. At the same time, I think almost all of the new stuff is at the bottom of the market. It's always just, it's sort of become a race to the bottom to some degree, right. I think. And while that's great, that means you're getting higher sound quality at a lower price and it's raising the bar for those diminishing returns. You're also not seeing much development on the high end of the market. That, yeah. So it's, you're not seeing like as much of the really, really good stuff that sometimes we might be more inclined to be looking forward to, but yeah. Just an interesting dichotomy that I thought I yeah, should that, point out. That's a really yeah. good point because, like, you know, when we talk about this stuff as being like, you know, the, the sub two hundred dollars stuff, you know, some of the stuff that we just mentioned, it's really great for the price, but you know, it's it's tough to find you know that same kind of like really great you know for the price that's new at a thousand dollars, because you know the existing standards are you know they're still there and and the new stuff as you're mentioning it hasn't really been hitting that that price point. But I want to ask you guys, I want to move on to um, sort of the next price bracket up. You know, if you, if someone gave you $500 to spend on audio stuff, what would that be? That was actually a surprisingly easy one for me. And it's a combo that I landed on years ago and have just still loved to this day. And that is the 6XX with the little dot Mark II, that little tube amp. Mm. Um, you can tube roll it super cheap it just sounds really good it adds more stage to that headphone and honestly at that price point you could pair it with just about any DAC that you can get your hands on and it's fine um, but yeah 6xx little dot mark two and that's one of those things where I could just if I had to I could live happily with that forever and just not touch anything else it's a weird way of saying HD 600 and uh, no, I'm just kidding <laughs> um, chrono your thoughts I feel like this is hard given that we just covered two hundred dollars. I feel like I feel like diminishing returns are as strong from two hundred to five hundred dollars as there are from like two thousand to six thousand dollars. Like I don't feel like there's really that much difference in the headphones. I mean, except for maybe like the Edition X XS, but that personally wasn't like one of my favorite headphones. So honestly, under five hundred dollars, I'd probably still stick to. I don't know, stuff like the HD 560S, 6XX, maybe the Sundara, pair with a nice, like a nice amp. So that's probably what I'd go with. Sundara and a nice amp? What is the what is the nice amp in your mind? Is it like a Atom Stack, Modi Magma? Oh, Atom Stack. Yeah. Yeah, Adam I love Stack? the GDS yeah. Live stuff. Precog. Honestly, I feel like this is a bit of a difficult question for me, just given that I really don't listen to many earphones under $500 for my own like personal enjoyment. And uh, yeah, right. yeah, but like, if I had to choose, I, okay, okay, say say you could stretch it to like six, seven hundred. Okay, exactly. Say I feel like six, seven hundred is like the sweet spot where like yeah. really good stuff starts cropping yeah. up. 
like in that price range, I could probably list a few more, but I, I do want to stick to like the 500. And I think under that price point, okay. it would be like the Blessing 2 Dusk. I still think that's just my overall f like favorite f under $500. Yeah, it's that just really, really hard good. to top, even with all the new, uh, all the new planar IMs, for example, that have been cropping up in the market. And I think the SA6 also from Dunu is also really close to that like 500, 550 price point. So that might be another contender for me. And if you could stretch it just a little bit, what would that, if you know, if I, could if I gave it. you 500 and someone else gave you 200. Okay. Uh, I think there's, there's a lot of the $700 range as <laughs> yeah, well. Yeah, like exactly. The, exactly. It's the audio stuff and yeah. Hmm. I think maybe the, well, there's the seventh acoustic supernova, but that's stretching it even a little more to $750. Um, but maybe at $700, $600, $700, the Moondrop S8, I think, is still a really good bet for me. <laughs> um, I know you don't like it, but like, I like it for my preferences. I would definitely take the Meteor over the uh The Meteor's good, too. It's pretty fun. Yeah. yeah. It's just a very different sound, yeah. though, you know? Well, yeah. One, one of them's shouty. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's definitely detailed. I get that. I get mm -hmm. that. Um, Golden, 500. Same question, I guess. Like, 500, but if, you know, if, if, if you could stretch it as well. If we're sticking strictly to 500, I definitely go for the Edition XS just because I think as an all-rounder headphone, it's great, and it's also something which you can you can kind of recommend to friends and stuff. Obviously, it's an expensive; it's a lot of money to spend on a headphone, but it's not a stupid amount that a non-audiophile is going to just completely balk at. If, if you told someone to spend a grand on headphones, they're just going to go, "Are you are you mad?" <laughs> Whereas I think Edition XS is kind of in that in that sweet spot. Uh, mine at 500 is probably. The everybody's going to think I'm going to say Sundar on an amplifier, but it's actually going to be the HD 600 from Sennheiser and yeah. a JDS Atom stack. How many times can we say HD 600 in this video? <laughs> well, it, it's one of I think price no HD limit 600, yeah. HD 600 no. <laughs> and a ten thousand dollar G band. Yeah. The the reason why I say HD 600 though is because like I feel like that's a headphone that like you need to have as a reference point, and it needs to like. Like regardless of what you know, we want for various different flavors. Like I like more bass than what the HD six hundred has. Like I'll just say it outright. But you know, it's such an important reference point for what great sound should be. That I, you know, again, my job is as a headphone reviewer, right? So it's like I have to be realistic about like you know needing something that is like okay, this is this is normal. <laughs> How do things compare to that, right? In a sense, right? Obviously, I think yeah, more bass would be probably better, but like for the other aspects, right? Like mids and treble. It's just so well balanced. It's just so natural. And yeah, um, so HD 600 and, uh, and an amplifier would probably be my under 500 pick. Um, but we could also go now up to $1,000. And if I gave you $1,000 and you had to spend it on audio gear, <laughs> um, mm. yeah, uh, what would it be for you guys? For $1,000? LCD2 classic and an atom stack. You know how you know I really love my prephasers. There's one right right there oh, on I, the wall. I guess you could, yeah, if you included like the, the used camera's point right if there. If you, you included the used market, you can include those. Right? Yeah. Well, if I could find a set of vegan pads somewhere and I could put them on the two classic, that's like kind of close to that direction where I'm like Ooh. Right. But yeah, two classic and uh and an atom stack for for right at $1000. I think I'd be pretty happy with that. Chrono? You know, I feel like for me this is where it starts to get complicated because there are a ton of headphones that I like in this in this price range. There you have the the Radians. Well, the ones the top three for me would be like the Radians, uh, the Noir, and the um, oh the Mezzi One Hundred Nine the One Hundred Nine Pros. Which uh, actually something that Cameron mentioned is that uh, you know headphones that we have to listen to because we're reviewing them, and then others that. I mean, I happen to have them here because I reviewed them, but they've been spending so much time on my head past the review period just because I enjoy them so much. So I think like under $1,000, honestly, like the Mezzi 109 Pro, I know that, that one's a bit controversial because some people might be like, but what about the clear? And for me, it's like, nope, 109 Pro over the clear all day, any day, easily. Really? Yeah, yeah, See, I, I know. I, I would not. I know. I would not make that choice. I like, I I know, like but both, I, but I would definitely choose clear. I, I know that, I know like the, like the more like, treble focus tuning might be bothersome for some listeners but i just find it to, to be more well-rounded the one i pro better sound stage better imaging also i found the tam the timbre to be more natural because the clear has that like uh, focal thing where it's like the the mids like there's like that like 
1.5 like 2k resonance so it sounds a little like um honky or metallic so it's like i was like yeah the 109 pro i i definitely find the 109 pro to be comfortable or more comfortable but uh between the two i would probably still go with the clear but it's 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 a you know valid you know thing because it's like you know especially if you're sitting and listening all day right or if you're gaming or whatever and you know the lighter headphone is often the one that gets more use precog thousand dollars or around a thousand dollars what what's what what stands out for what you would buy i mean i don't think that there's a huge amount of distinction between ims at like 700 to a grand um the one that really does stand out to me though would be the helios at 1100 the only issue that i have with the helios really is the fit like if i'm going to be using it for long periods of time it's it's manageable, but at the same time, like if I'm going out in public or something like that, I don't like wearing them because they stick out a tiny bit if I don't like deep seat them. Man, the the nozzles, the Symphonium nozzles are the ones they they, they get to me. <laughs> uh, how long can you wear the Helios for? A couple hours, maybe at most. I used to have like a sick game with myself, like <laughs> see how long I can fit some of these items in my ear for. And you know what's funny is my ears have actually like adapted over time to wearing IMs. When I first started reviewing, when I first started wearing IMs, I could wear most IMs max, maybe about like an hour and a half, two hours. And I can wear them like all day. So like, I feel like it's something that you could definitely get used to with enough time. IMs yeah. are stretching your ears? Yeah, I, I, I legit think so. Or I hit puberty <laughs> late. I hit puberty, it's puberty a, late. It's, a, it's an ear growth spurt. It's, it's a thing. <laughs> I, it's a thing. Because I have a friend, he bought his CIMs when he was like, I think... 16 15 now he's like 17 or 18 they don't hmm. fit anymore like his ears are too big they don't form a seal mm. well is, doesn't they say like your ears never stop or maybe it's your nose like one of the two never stops growing. i i your ears, your ears yeah, yeah. my old customs don't fit as well i guess yeah. this is good advice too if you're if you're young don't buy cims yet wait until your ears are fully developed yeah i got cims like four or five years ago something like that and now they still fit but it's like it's not the same interesting this, this, this took a weird turn, though. <laughs> I think for me, if I could find one available, um, because it's hard to find these days, it would be uh, the LCD 2F. <laughs> um, because I think that that's better than the classic um, by a significant margin. And then I would just EQ it. It's about as simple. I think I still think that that is the most, that's probably the most fun to be had under $1,000. Um, you know, as long as you do dive into EQ. And it would be the 2021 you know, with new pads, not the memory foam pads. Um, you know, I have to make sure it's the right thing. It's just that I, everywhere I think is sold out of that one, or at least I, I don't know what the status of that one is right now because I know that they, uh, Odyssey changed something with like, you know, uh, how those were made like a while ago. And I'm not sure if they're still made the same way. So I'd need to look into that. But yeah, LCD 2F would be my pick. $2,000. Oh boy. I'm going up the ladder. We could probably like say high end because it doesn't. Like, Two thousand dollars is like a, a bit limiting, right? Like, it doesn't need to be like. <laughs> I was sky's gonna say the I plan these like, by the dollar. Do do we have to include accessories, even if they're necessary to run the headphone? I did uh, that. So because I'd pick, I'd pick the CA one A, but then like the headphones themselves are under two grand. But then you have to get the box to actually connect them. Well, to this is well. this is what we would buy. Right. So would the accessories be stopping you from buying it? Exactly. That's a good point. Um, yes, they would. I'd still need to. Well, let's just so. say let's just say like high end. You know, two thousand dollars roughly. You know, twenty five hundred is fine, right? We're not going like truly ridiculous. But if someone just like here's a bunch of money, <laughs> that's more than two thousand dollars. What would you buy with it? If we're not going for like the five, six grand stuff, I'd really struggle between either the ZMF Caldera or the RAL C1A. One, one of those two. Um, those those are both just, I think, phenomenal value. They're not, neither of them are flawless headphones. They've got uh, pros and cons. But again, just things that I've had here, which I've ended up spending quite a lot of personal time listening to beyond the evaluation stage. Both of those I've I've listened to a lot and really, really enjoyed. So either of those headphones would do it for me right. dms oh man so i plan this out to be like right at two thousand dollars um it's not the hd 600 for once <laughs> that's a surprise <laughs> yeah i know 
Are you sure? You it can pick the HD600. Um, <laughs> no, that's if price is no object, then it's the HD600. So just get four HD600s? Yeah. Five? I don't know how many you get. <laughs> just cover your body in them. Um, yeah. <laughs> that's how you make an Orpheus. Uh, so, yeah. uh, Focal Clear, okay, with a dark voice and an NFB11. So NFB11 can be both a solid state amp and it's the DAC. And I can flip it over, just use it as a DAC for the dark voice. Focal clear, I can choose either tube or solid state. All that fits just at 2000. Hmm, interesting. I feel like that would just be my go-to because I love the sound of clear on OTL because it's just that like under damped kind of loose, crazy sort of sound. Um, but then you can throw it on solid state and it gets super, super tight and analytical. And yeah, it's just best of both worlds, I feel like. Well, it's going to down tilt the, the whole thing a little bit, right? Yes. Yeah, it down tilts the whole yeah, thing expect. OTL. So it just, yeah. and it sounds like a high output impedance under damped setup when you're using a dark voice on a clear. And it's very, very gushy. C uh, chrono, uh, 2000, roughly. HD 100S. Yeah, that was HD pretty easy. S. Just maybe a couple extra connectors. Okay, uh, precog. Oh, yes. <laughs> pretty cock. Mine is pretty straightforward as well. Just the U12T. It's been my go-to for like the past, I think, it's like going on three years at this point. Nothing has knocked it really for me, um, especially not at that price range. Uh, and, you know, I think the great thing about like being into IMs is like I don't have to locate much of my budget to sources or anything like that. Like it's 10 bucks for an Apple dongle and that's like plenty sufficient for me even though I do have a more expensive DAP that I have. Uh, for me, I would probably get an HD 600 and... No, I'm just kidding. Uh, <laughs> um, it's, it's, it is a difficult thing because a lot of... I actually have an answer, but a, a lot of headphones that used to be more expensive or within this like, you know, under 2000 like $1,500 to $2,000 price bracket have actually come down in price. Like now there's... Like the Hyphenman Aria, for example, is now I think at like $1,300. Um, I was going to say, I'm surprised no one said yeah, that yet. So, I was tempted to. Yeah, so... So you could get an Aria with, with something else, an HD six hundred, <laughs> right? Like that's not bad. Um, and then you get dynamic and planar, and I think that's actually a, a very you know competent uh, uh, group. Um, and it's probably the better, you know, the thing that makes the most sense. But my answer for this is actually going to be the HE one thousand, the Hyphenman HE one thousand V two, which is currently on sale for two thousand hmm. dollars. I don't know if it's going to stay that way, but like that's. I was I just got it in to evaluate and you know it's really good. <laughs> it's a it's like neutral bright, right? But it's one that's super easy to EQ and like you guys know me, like I'm, you know, EQ gang and and everything. So um I found it really easy to dial in and it just sounds so good, like so nice and and detailed, dare I say it. Um so yeah, under 2 grand I would probably get the HU 1000 V2. Um and I know that people are like, but it's and it doesn't have dynamics, but I don't care. Now, price, no object. If 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 you won the lottery, or if you know someone gives you a ton of money, but you can only spend it on audio equipment, say like fifty thousand dollars. Does it have? When you say audio gear, does it have to be something you listen to? Because like a car. The nerdy <laughs> side of me really wants one of those. No, clip the Clipel uh, NFS oh. scanning systems. Yeah, like I, I probably wouldn't say APX really cool. 555. <laughs> if it has to be something we listen to, I either Shangri-La Senior on an AIC-10 with the Transformer, that was mm. phenomenal, or the Aperio, one of the two, and I'd struggle to pick between the two. Um, I would probably sell them and put a deposit down on a house instead, but... If I had to listen to them, had to buy them and keep them, a Perio is just yeah. Such someone, a good some it's such a good with this system. setup, someone that person who gives you the money also chains you to you know the desk or the chair or whatever and forces you to listen. You have to yeah. sit there and, and listen. they play only Burzum through the through the equipment, so that you can only listen to obscure black metal. No, I'm just kidding for the last part, but you do have to listen to it. <laughs> can I change my answer to HD six hundred? Okay, Chrono. If someone gives you fifty thousand dollars, what do you what do you buy? See, I want to say HE one, but it wouldn't it wouldn't fifty thousand dollars wouldn't cover it with tax. Can we stretch to a hundred k? Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, I'll do a HE one with like a cheeky Suzvara on the side. I think. 
It's just a cheeky little Susvara. <laughs> yeah, a cheeky little Susvara, also Susvara. an 8600. Now, the Susvara, quite lovely, I'll tell you. Uh, and, I, and I would choose it over the LCD5, personally. Be, I mean, I love the sound of the LCD5, amazing headphone, but for me, it was just a little too clampy. So I think for comfort, oh, yeah. if I were actually going, if I had to be chained to a desk to listen to it, it would be a Susvara. I think it would ease in the, the burden a bit there. HE one should come with like a little miniature Axel Grell who you know sings music at you while you while you listen or something or like an action figure. <laughs> he de- he designs miniature headphones for you on the desk. <laughs> he designs HD six hundreds for you. <laughs> there you go. That's him. <laughs> yeah. Don't give a man a fish. Teach a man a fish. Or give him a, give give a man Axel Grell to make you HD six hundreds for life. Teach Axel Grell to fish. There you go. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Would you rather have HD six hundreds or heavy HD six hundreds? I'm sorry. DMS is just uh um uh <laughs> I don't want I'm to sorry. remember. Yeah. Um okay, so precog, price no object. I know you've heard some crazy IEMs. Yeah, yeah. I mean if we're talking like twenty, fifty thousand dollars, I don't think we're even IEM or headphone territory anymore. Like I'm going straight to speakers if I have that much money. And I think I'd be looking at like a decked out like Channel X. You could Build a dedicated room for that much money, like isolated mm-hmm. and everything. I mean, I, I work from home too, so like, I can just, I could just listen to music all day, and I have no worries about like blasting the volume either from my room. So yeah, I think for me, I'd be just dumping it full on into like a decked out Genelec setup or something like that. Um, but yeah, that would be that would be my pick. Um, I actually wrote a couple things for this because it was so tough. But I guess if I had like infinite money I could buy multiple things um first most ridiculous thing would be an Atmos system of Magnapans just because I think that'd be ridiculous <laughs> <laughs> like just yeah. just big room open baffle 12 channel psychopath stuff um ignoring that and moving into the headphone world yes HD 600 actually but I would in all seriousness ZMF Caldera and Utopia with Nautilus. Okay. So we get the amps and sound okay. amp. We get Utopia. We get ZMF Caldera. So I got a dynamic and a planar. I'm happy. I was really tempted to say Warwick Acoustic Bravura, um, but I feel like nothing Not beats a, a collection. I did, I like Bravura. Oh, I guess you like the Bravura better. Yeah. Yeah. But I feel like nothing beats having a collection. Like I couldn't just be happy with one headphone. So that's, that's why fair. I went this route. Um, for my pick, I'm going to go with um, my dream car, the uh, Toyota Camry, <laughs> uh, which I'm not joking. That's my dream car because it's quiet. And uh, I would deck it out in one of those nice car audio kits. I'm not joking. That, that's Get fo- yep. Focal Utopia speakers yeah. in your car. They do have a yeah. Utopia car line, don't they? Yep. yep. Uh, that's more expensive than what the price, 50 grand, but uh, if I were to buy a, a car. But yeah, if, 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 I, if, if price was no object, I would, get, I would get my dream car, which is a Toyota Camry. When you first said that, I thought I you were just going to start the car and just listen to it idling and be like, ah, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, uh, it would be that. And then it would be, yeah, like I would deck it out. And I don't, I don't know if it's the Focal. It probably would be the Focal, one of the, the car kits. Um, but I know there's other brands that do really awesome car stuff as well. Um, What's the I most feel like- acoustically ideal car? Like, is there, because some car manufacturers put a lot of effort into that, don't they? With yeah, actually they do. isolating everything, Rolls Royce and stuff. Yeah, so, uh, yeah, I'm sure there's better ones, but for 50 grand, I could probably get a Camry. So, yeah. <laughs> um, plus, yeah, that's they true. have ones, I, th- I think they have ones that are four wheel drive, and I live in Canada, so, you know, that's fairly important. That's legitimately what I would do, and it would be an audio related thing. Um, the only the only thing there is like yeah I mean if it, if it can't be a car if I had to pick something else it would be something speaker related because I, I think that like you know for me like yes I will I will grant that you know like even st- even high end stuff like the Susvara or, or you know LCD five or Utopia like th- it is better than like the, there are there are things about these high end ones that are better than the sub a thousand dollar stuff I still get a lot of enjoyment from headphones that are under a thousand dollars, you know, or mm-hmm. HD six hundreds. <laughs> right. I get a lot of enjoyment from headphones that are not, you know, ultra expensive. And, you know, so if we're talking about stuff that is like in the absurd price category, it's like even if it is a little bit better, I'd probably still spend that money on some some nice speakers, you know, Gentle X, something like that. Um, or I like your your, you know, psychopath 
Atmos Magna Pants idea. <laughs> I might do something like that. Uh, but yeah, those would be those would be my picks. So if you like this video, please leave a like down below. Comment letting me know what you want to see in the future. If you want to get active in the community, again, the forums and the Discord both linked in the video description. And as always, don't forget to stick around, subscribe for more videos like this in the future. Until next one, guys. Peace. Peace. And remember, no matter how much money you have, go buy an HD 600. <laughs> That's the moral of this story.